no 11.97 this year. <laughs> Got her done. His back, his spine's a little messed up, I feel like. YouTubers, what is up? Beautiful morning here in Southeast Iowa, and it's a good day. Cause it's something, it's something new. Something new and exciting. Today, as you can see, we got our seed corn loaded up on the trailer. And we're getting ready to start planting season 2023. David's on his way with the planter right now. We're up here in our north corn field, probably our best field that we got. And uh, we're amped, we're ready to go. And hope we hope the weather stays good and the forecast is supposed to be beautiful for the next couple weeks. So hopefully it can stay that way and we can get everything planted, no problem. If everything went perfect. Oh, it's gonna go perfect. That's a nice t-shirt. Did you get like 40 free bags of corn with that t-shirt? I wish that's how that worked. And I also wish that if you just wore a John Deere hat, maybe you'd get a 40%, 50%. Hell, if you could get a free tractor out of the deal, that'd be great too. What are you smoking this morning? I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to represent the brands that we use. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, yeah, the weather is perfect. We're about almost three weeks earlier than where we were last year as far as to start planting and the weather's good it's supposed to be 83 today um we're supposed to get rain saturday i think i think david's got all of his corn planted and we'll have half ours done uh probably by tonight and then we're going to probably take a pause and we're going to wait till this front moves through it's going to be cooler next week and it had looked like it was going to be you know significantly cooler but they've moderated that and it looks like it's going to be in the 60s so it may not be a trap after all i i was kind of hesitant uh to get started as early as we are going to but misery loves company and everybody else is going so it's go time so we better get it done so do we got any 11.97 this year or we we've run our course on that i was a die hard never gonna stop planting 11.97 but last year last year convinced me that it was time to move on so there's no 11.97 this year 10.27 and Nine, oh, 0953 I can't keep all the numbers straight so these two are going on our bean ground and then two different numbers on our corn on corn ground but it's kind of sad 1197 has been good to me but hopefully these will be even better here's the man with the plan gotta love it America is at its finest we're gonna load the planter up and we're gonna get started What is up? Man, oh man, I drive a Chevy. It has been a long winter and I haven't seen y'all in a coon's age. It is crop season 2023. It is planting time. And in the hearts and minds of farmers, hope springs eternal. This is the year we're gonna have our best year. And that's just the way it's gonna be. So I'll fill you on some of the backstage production changes that we've seen this season. I have received one heck of a raise this year. So I've gone from being the smartest and handsomest member of the cast to this year now, I am the sound technician, AKA the boom operator, and I'm also the cameraman. Look at that. So here, this, this will do farm this year. I'm happy to take on these new responsibilities. Turn up that volume and take your Dramamine because I'm going to take us on a ride.
So while David's in the field planting, we're up here at site one and we're gonna start pulling pigs. So for those of you that have been with us long enough, you know that pulling fallback pigs is essential when you're starting to group off right. Um, pretty much any pig that it looks at is funny. You know, they, they're skinny, they're small, they got their backbone showing, they look like they might be sick, they have a broken leg, swollen joints, anything that's off pudding with the pig or anything that looks not right, we're gonna pull them out of the general population and put them in what's called a fallback pig pen. And it's good for the general population to get those kind of pigs out too because if they are sick or they are, you know, not a great pig, you don't want them uh, getting anybody else sick in the general population. And those fallback pigs, if they fall back far enough, they'll just get pushed out, of, pushed out of the way and they won't be able to have their spot at the feeder. It's just good for everybody to pull those kind of pigs out and isolate them. What do you think, Torque? Pretty good, pretty good. Really pulling them for uneven. I mean, this is a pretty good pig. He's just a little small, so. Why do we pick them up by the back leg? We get that question a lot. Oh yeah, you can't pick a pig up by his front leg because his front leg is actually not like, not like people. His front leg is not, there's not like a socket. That front leg is only held in place basically by the muscles around it. So you can dislocate a pig's front leg really easy if you grab it by the front leg. The back leg, that's just like your hip. There's a ball on it. And it's really the safest plate, safest place to pick a pig up by. And you're like, well, pick them up around the belly. Well, one, it's really hard to get a hold of them by grabbing around the belly. And they do not like to be squeezed. If you pick up a pig, the least, the least stressful way to get him is picking him up by his back leg versus trying to cradle it. And you definitely don't want to grab him by the front leg because you can dislocate it. So safest place. Let's see what we can get into here. So right off the bat, this pig here, he's got, he's, he's filling out nice, but he's got kind of a, his back, his spine's a little messed up, I feel like. Ugh, he's got a little bit of a hump back. This pig, he's just rough haired. He doesn't look very good. That pig right there, I'm gonna pull too, cause he's rough haired and he's smaller than the rest. Set you down nice and easy. That pig right there, he's just he's just rough haired. Good idea to get him out. And you can kind of see his, his backbone. His backbone showing a little bit. Overall though, these pigs look pretty good, honestly. They they honestly are starting to fill out a little bit better than what we thought they might. That pig for sure, look at how rough haired he is. He he doesn't look like he's feeling very good. So we'll pull him. That pig, same deal, rough haired, small. Oh. oh, I know. Oh, I know. Oh. Good idea to pull him. Oh. There we go. I think the rest of these look pretty good. What's taking you so long? I'm thorough. Oh, no, it's because I gave you, I picked the best side. Oh, you gave me the... These, these are the four youngest. These were the sort backs the first time. Oh, gotcha. So I took the easy side. I feel like also you got a little bit of an advantage because you're closer to the ground. You mean I'm more nimble? You get to say it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take it that way. Yeah, okay. Oh, quicker than I am. <laughs> I'm not feeling very nimble. So this pig, there's nothing wrong with him. He's just a little small. This pig's a little skinny, but they'll be fine. They just will do better if they're in a, if they're in a pen of their peers. I'm gonna take this pig right here. There's one more in here right back there. Okay, on to the next. These about got their nipple bar down. It's about time to take these nipple bars out. 
I'm just gonna raise that up another. Usually we wait, usually we wait till overstocks go out, but we might have to take them out. If they start getting to the point where they can get them off, it's time to put them up. One more in here. That pig right there. Mm. Uh, one more. Take you, little buddy. Uh, I'm not as good with the left hand grab as I am with the right. I need to be more ambidextrous. Well, there's the cream of the crop. What do you think? They look pretty good when you get them all together. They're actually pretty even. I mean, there's a few in here that are pretty rough. I'll just keep Matt feeding these. I might put a snap-in feeder in here, but they're, they'll be all right. And you can really tell the difference when you look at those to those. Same age pigs. And that's, that's what's funny is, you know, these, these are basically within a, within a week of each other, all these pigs in this room. So that's just the difference in genetics and luck of the draw, you know, I mean, once they get their pecking order, some of them just don't have the, just don't have the drive that the other ones do and they get pushed aside or whatever. They could have whatever wrong with them. But anyway, they'll do, they'll do fine in there. It's a little breezy out today, folks. So I apologize if there's any annoying wind noise, but we're gonna try to keep it to a minimum. But we're, we're done with about 26 acres so far. He's coming back now and we're gonna fill the planter up and he'll probably get another 26 acres done after that. So. Slowly but surely, we're getting there. sunset which will be beautiful so far we've got 51 acres done going to about 90 still running well so we're looking good okay I'll bring you up the speed on the uh, operational aspect of how we're doing this this year so right now today we are on the uh, Meek farm their north field here and for those of you who have watched for years, you probably remember my lament of how we used to farm this thing north and south. Well, that yielded us, or that gave us rows that were approximately a quarter mile long. This year, we're farming it east to west. Well, that's given us some kind of logistical issues that aren't ideal. Um, we are a no till they're a no-till operation here, so we are going crossways against the rows. I don't know if you can see that. It's giving us a rough ride. That yellow screen at the top. Right there means rough ride. Uh, but for the most part, our singulation is still good. So as with anything, if you want to break an egg, you gotta make a few omelets. Um, we just kind of bit the bullet this year or and decided to plant this thing east to west. When we put manure on for them in the fall, we use RTK, that little green and yellow globe there on the top of the planter in the center. That is our GPS globe, and that controls the exact positioning of that planter. We put that thing on the manure bar in the fall, and when we put our manure on, we're strategically placing it so that this year, when we go back to plant our seed, we can drop it, you can see those dark lines in the soil there. We can drop that seed right in the poop trough. We're not technically truly a strip till organization operation here. We're mainly no till, but we've kind of uh, molded the two together. So 
We're no-till with strategically placed nutrients. I guess we could put it that way. So for those of you who don't farm our own land, mulberries are the scourge of humanity. And that right there is how a farmer lumberjacks. Get it torque. Get that nasty mulberry tree out of there. Mulberry trees are the raccoon of the tree world. That's a beautiful sight. Kill it. Looks like we got her done. Seems like there's no real bad headaches, no real big major problems with the planter or the tractor. We just had to break our backs to put the seed in the planter. And if that's the worst thing that happens, pretty damn good day of planting. Pretty good day. Yeah, I, did, I didn't mind it a bit. We got a lot of stuff done too, so it's a good deal.